We'll move on now to the Battle of Uhud, which took place on in Shawwal of the third year after Hijrah. So in Shawwal of the third year after Hijrah, the Mushrikeen of Mecca decided to take revenge against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa So they bring their forces with the army that is led by Abu Sufyan and Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was at the time among the Mushrikeen. And they fight against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam in the city of Medina. The Prophet realized that there is a weakness in the location in which they'll be fighting and that is basically the back of the Muslims would be unprotected. Hence the Mushrikeen could attack them from behind. So he kept 50 archers on a hill that became known as the Archer's Hill. He told them, do not ever step down until I signal to you. And he kept a man by the name of Abdullah as their leader. Their job was to see if anyone sneaks from behind the Muslims army, they would protect the back of the Muslims with their arrows. Muslims started fighting and started becoming victorious. And they started winning and the Mushrikeen became weak and they started to retreat. But unfortunately what happened is as this retreat was happening, the majority of these archers fearing that they would lose on the booty. So because of the love of booty, worldly affairs, worldly matters, they neglected the command of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the majority of them came down. Their leader Abdullah said, we are not allowed to go down. The Prophet told us, we cannot go down until he signals to us. And he has not given us the signal yet. They said to him, leave us. We need to go after the booty. So that was a deliberate disobedience to the commands of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Khalid ibn al-Walid saw that the back of the Muslim was now not being protected anymore, he took a few of his men and told the rest of the army to go and attack the Muslims again, to go back to fight. And he turned around and he sandwiched the Muslims in the middle such that he attacked them and he weakened them. And unfortunately, Muslims started getting shaken and many of them ran away. In fact, the majority of the Muslims ran away. Although the Prophet was calling them, they started running up the mountain of Uhud. Quran says you, you started running up the mountain without even turning back to respond to the call of the Prophet That was a second deliberate disobedience of the command of Rasulullah. They neglected him, they deserted him, they left him and only a handful of people. And history confirms that amongst those individuals was Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi. He did not leave Rasulullah. He fought with him until his sword was broken. Jibra'il came to Rasulullah with a sword and said, give this to Ali. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ali is defending you with all his heart and his all his life, fiercely and immensely. The Prophet said, do you know why Ya Jibra'il? He said, why? He said, because he's of me and I'm of him. Jibra'il said, and I'm of you too as well. So Imam Ali continued to fight and there was that cry made from the heavens, لا فتا إلا علي لا سيف إلا ذو الفقار. But unfortunately, many Muslims got killed in that battle as well. 70 Muslims got killed. Some of the greatest of the Muslims, including Mus'ab ibn Umair, Allah Ta'ala who was the Prophet's ambassador to Medina. He is the one who helped uh, spread the message of Islam among the people of Medina. He was killed in that battle. Abdullah, the father of Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he was killed in that battle. Amr ibn al-Jamuh was killed in that battle and the leaders of the martyrs or the best of them at the time who was given the title of Sayyid al-Shuhada was Hamza, the Prophet's uncle, Salamullahi alayhi, who was killed by Wahshi at the command of Hind the wife of Abu Sufyan, who lost her father and her brother and her son in the battle of Badr. So she avenged their death by killing Hamza. Then she came to the body of Hamza, mutilated it, cut off his fingers, cut off his ears, cut off his nose, made a necklace out of it, and she put it around her neck. 
and then she cut out the heart and the liver of Hamza and she chewed the liver but Allah did not allow her to swallow it so she threw it out of her mouth. So the Muslims suffered greatly unfortunately and many of them were killed but because of the perseverance of Imam Ali and Rasulullah and a few handful not more than five individuals remained with the Prophet including a woman by the name of Nasiba when she saw the men running away they left Rasulullah she picked up a sword and started defending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, such that she endured so many heavy wounds that it took one year for her wounds to cure but then they managed to save Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Imam Ali and brought back the Prophet safe to Medina although this Prophet himself was wounded his tooth was broken Imam Ali suffered the wounds Abu Sufyan on his way back celebrating his victory then paused and told the army what made us stop we should have gone back to Medina and destroyed the Muslims I mean they ran away their morale is crushed why not go back and finish them once and for all so they decided to go back to Medina the Prophet heard the news he got up and he said only those people who were wounded are allowed to come and join me to defend a handful of people got up handful the news reached Abu Sufyan that the Prophet has come with a handful of people he could not believe it he said it's impossible that he is bringing us only a handful of people to fight an entire army and then he got worried Abu Sufyan he said maybe this man has a plan he wants to deceive us thinking that only only these few individuals are coming but rather he has an army behind him and they will do a trap and turn our victory into a loss so he got feared and scared and he told the mushrikeen let's go back to Quraysh forget about it let's not turn our victory into a loss and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Islam through the nobility and the bravery of the Prophet and those few individuals who fought with him and that's why the Quran commends them in Surah Ali Imran in saying whenever you're faced with a fear or difficulty you say and Allah inshallah will protect you and save you so the Prophet then came back to Medina victorious from that second incident Muslims initially who thought that the Prophet was killed in Uhud they returned back and there were over 60 verses revealed in Surah Ali Imran blaming the Muslims for letting the Prophet down and saying وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad is not but a messenger قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ رسول. Other messengers have come before him أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ So if he dies or gets killed you revert back In other words the Muslims Many of them, when they thought that the Prophet was killed, they thought about reverting back to Shirk wal Billah so that Quraysh would accept them back. They changed, their faith was shaken. So Allah condemned them for this, blamed them for these actions. Over 60 verses in the Quran and Surah Al Imran were revealed about this incident and the Battle of Uhud. But unfortunately, it left heavy wounds in the hearts of the Muslims. Many of them were weeping and crying. The Prophet came by um, a house that was weeping and crying. And he said, why don't then people weep and cry for my uncle Al-Hamza? This is mentioned in Tariq Al-Tabari. So the Prophet, he encouraged people to commemorate the death of Hamza. Not just by crying, but yandubun, which means they show their... Uh, emotions either by beating their chests or beating their heads or by crying out loudly and hence it is also the Sunnah of the Prophet to weep for Imam al Hussein salam Allah alayhi, as he himself according to Ibn Hajar al Haythami in his Sawa'iq al Muhraqa says that the Prophet cried for Imam al Hussein salam Allah alayhi.